Hi, I'm Dan Cox, and this is The Totally Tanya Show. Tanya, first, I got to jump at you because there's so much stuff that goes on on social media. All this stuff is happening. I see interviews, interviews, requests, all this crap with the interviews. Now, obviously, I do the interviews, too. And so I want to touch on this a little bit, and then I want to talk to you about this title defense that you have, because obviously this is, it's a huge fight. And I don't care who you're fighting. It's a huge fight for you in your career. And uh, so, hey, let me ask you, how did your day go today? Uh, it was good. It was good. Got some training in. I don't think I take a single day off. So I, I definitely need to get to, like, have a rest day. But my yeah. coaches, I train with different coaches at different gyms. And it seems like when some one coach is taking time off, I'm overworking at a different gym. So, man, it's like never ending. But uh, you know what? I I do all this on short notice. Like, well, I say short notice, but like just my fight camp. These girls are training full time probably, but just my fight camp I train. So I try to cram it all in and, and get as much done as I can in a short amount of time. Well, I don't think people understand actually how much you do travel. Um, in your just weekly training and what you do. I mean, can you give a little insight into the responsibilities and the dedication it takes to be the champ? Oh, where to start? <laughs> no, I know. Um, I, I do usually like two a days every day, but it's different. Sometimes I'll do boxing and MMA, and sometimes I'll do my strength conditioning and boxing and strength and conditioning and MMA, and then like it's just different. Um, every every day is different. Every camp is different. I like to change things up every camp and um, work on areas that I think that uh, I was lacking in the fight before, and and uh, try to pick up my game back to uh, you know to to be untouchable everywhere. So you know I, I definitely been working on a lot of things this camp that I didn't work on last camp, and uh, we're gonna see a completely different fight. It's gonna be fun as soon as I get this weight off. That's then, exciting. Uh, that's the that's the hardest part, I think. But other than that, man, I'm it just is, gonna go in there and fight. But, I'm sure you know, she'll do the same. We'll put you know on what? a good show. Tanya, I, I understand. What's that? No, I'm sorry. I said the fans will either love us or they hate us, but either way, we're gonna go out there and fight. As long as they watch. Right. That's all I care about. That's it. And let me say you know, something. I, thought, I did see a post today by Cyborg, and it was said that. Uh, UFC made um, what 13 million off of Fight Pass this last year, and obviously Invicta is their their top seller, their top show on Fight Pass. So uh, that's pretty awesome, you know what I mean? Like, it's... I've actually tried to get the numbers <laughs> from Shannon before, like just to to you know spit out to my sponsors so that yeah. it kind of pumps my sponsorship up a little bit, but. Uh, uh, them aren't available. I don't think well, they're even available to her. UFC doesn't want her to know how much they're selling. Well, so, uh, it, but we do know that we're the number one entity. Is that right? Is that the right word? It is. You, listen, <laughs> we're the number one show they got, number one promotion. So yeah. that's pretty awesome for Invicta. It's incredible. And women's MMA is Invicta. And Tanya I can give you something to give to your sponsors. And that is that your show, Totally Tanya, goes out to a minimum of 16 million in the states, not counting YouTube or any of that, 16 million in the states, four to six different countries, and it's being picked up by different channels as we speak. So I will get the numbers for you for that so that you can relay that to these guys that, listen, you're not just touching this crowd or that crowd. You're, you're making a huge, huge uh, a statement to everyone. A lot of people are being able to view and see and learn who Tanya Avenger is. And listen, I've noticed on social media, Tanya, and I've looked back before and I look now and I see so much growth in the social media and the popularity of Tanya Avenger. And that's got to make you feel good. I think I'm more popular amongst my haters. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't have as many uh, fans as I have haters, but uh, you know what? I don't really care. I don't care. I love it's, the haters. The day it's funny, and and uh, you know, someone pissed me off, and I pissed some of them off, and you know, uh, whatever. It kind of helps me get ready. It always seems to happen right before my fight, so it kind of gets me a little 
crazy in the head and a little angry and uh, yeah. and it works out for the best. So I don't even mind it during fight camp. It always does. It always works out for the best. But see, that's the one thing though I think people need to understand is you are it's not that you're a veteran because you've been in the game so long. You've had the fights, but you're mentally strong. You're a leader. You're not a follower. You don't go to the gym that someone tells you to. You do. I go to the gym that lets me in for free. <laughs> you just ruined it, oh. Tanya. Damn. I was pumping you up, and you just took it away from me. Well, let no, me tell I got, you. I got some great gyms, and I. You do. To be honest, I wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for coaches and gyms yep. letting me come in and train and, and um, you know, be a part of their team and, and, yep. and be an athlete under them and, and kind of guide me in the way I am right now and the path down the way I took, you know, and, and yep. I'm, I'm here and, and I'm happy. And uh, if I had to pay to go to a gym, I think that I wouldn't, I would never have been able to train at half the places I did, you know? So yep. you know, I would say this time when nobody, none of the female fighters were, were fighting out there like they are today. Like we got numbers now, but uh, maybe it was a time, but man, thank God for that. I will say this, Tanya, I have, I have one thing that I really want to be able to provide to give you the opportunity and you, you could slam me right here on the show. And but that is to get you a one-on-one -on -one session for three days, five days, a week, whatever, with Angelo Reyes on striking. Angelo, listen, I know Angelo personally. He's a great guy. He's dedicated to the sport. Uh, he, you know, he, yeah, he trains Frank Mayer and these guys and everyone else. He works with Ricky Lundell. And and they're all great. They're professionals. They're awesome. But Angelo, this is Freddie Roach's understudy for years. I mean, he's trained Manny Pacquiao, George St. Pierre, and I couldn't even list the names. He understands this game. He actually has a black belt in Kempo, which is karate, and I don't know the difference. But nevertheless. <laughs> I just know Chuck Liddell did it. So. Yeah, you had the tattoo, right? Because he had that tattoo. And at the That's time, how I like, learned it. What the hell is that gay tattoo on his shoulder? Yeah. But, it's Kempo. You know. I want to learn it. Yeah. I know, but I don't know what it is still. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me ask you. Now, every fight that you approach is, you know, like, like we talked before, it's a little bit different. Opponents are different. The mindset, your physical uh, feeling, your body, your health, but then the personal stuff too. Now, as you become more mainstream and popular, because that's what's happening, people are really recognizing the talent and then what you've done. Because there is a very elite few at this weight division. And the fact that you're not in UFC creates that question of everybody. It's it is. Crime. It is. But let me ask you something. Coming up with this fight, tell me who your opponent is for everybody so they know. I don't want to say it. They get mad at me. You tell me. And what is it in your mind that is different than any other fight that you've had. You should have put the pressure on me because I don't know how to say her name either. I just know Yana. That's I it. Just That's all you got to say. Yana MMA on Google and her shit pops up. That's all I know. Yep. I can't say that last name. It's like a bunch of letters that don't go together in the English language, you know, so. You're too I'm smart, too Tanya. I'm not Damn it. pronouncing anything. So. You called me out. You called me out and you caught me. You called me, so I accept it. <laughs> It looks like you're trying to send me in to get my ass whooped in a fight, but it ain't going to no! happen. No! Uh, I just wanted, <laughs> I wanted you to mispronounce the name. <laughs> I didn't want to have to say it. That's all. But what is I it now? I to be the announcers on Invicta, man. I think third of the roster has names that are so hard to pronounce. Even some girls from the U.S. Like, oh, my gosh. Every time I'm, like, waiting for them to announce it, I'm like, are they going to get it right? Oh, they nailed it. They nailed it. But see, it. <laughs> that's, why, that's why you say... In the blue corner, Tanya, right? <laughs> and it, nobody knows what the hell you're saying. So yeah, yeah, it does work. It's not such a hard job. Um, no offense to the guys that do it well, but I think I could do it well too. But I want to know, Tanya, what is it with this fight that you're – and don't – obviously, you're not going to give it away, but everything is a little bit different. I mean, are you working more on stand-up? More on your ground game, your your deadly grounded pound. Tito Ortiz of uh, women's MMA. When Tito yeah. was in his prime, I work on the same stuff every time. I'll tell you that. That's what I do. I work on the same stuff every time, and and sometimes I don't get to work 
certain areas as much as I'd like to. But, uh, you know, that just comes with, I guess, time in the gym and, and availability of certain coaches yeah. and certain training partners. And, you know, if they aren't there, I'm not able to, to work certain things. But, uh, you know, I have certain training partners that I go with, and um, I don't just go in the gym and, and do rounds with everybody. You know, some of them guys are in there to knock my head off, and, and uh, you know, they want to run around and talk about, I knocked out Tanya Avenger in the gym. Bitch, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. We aren't even going to spar now. You want to knock no, me out? No, oh, isn't that crazy? I'm trying to be a champion. I'm trying to, like, <laughs> keep winning here and keep from getting injured and and. I'm getting ready for a fight. Hell no. So I'm really picky about my training partners. And I yeah. think that um, that's really important. And I think that no matter what I train and what I do, there's one thing I just, I have to be in shape. That's it. Yeah. I know how to fight already. I've been doing this for 12 years. Yes. And I think that that's what you see out of a lot of these girls. They're trying to play catch up and they're trying to be in yeah. shape and they're trying to come in here and fight against me. And I've had that, that background going for 12 years. And all I got to do is go in the gym and be in shape. Stay yeah, but Tanya, you have out there fight. you're you're not civil, <laughs> yeah. if you know, but you do have a couple multiples, and and I will say this, your your cardio when your cardio is on, I I struggle to see someone that beats you. I really do because your mental game is so strong. You have you've just been in this long enough where you know. I mean, you're so comfortable. And what you do, this is your job. You know, a lot of guys, they come in and, and the fight is just so much and so much. This is your job. You've embraced it and you've taken it to the level now of superstardom. That's where you're at. We're right here. And this fight is super important. And I want to know after the fight and what best best intentions, obviously, I'm, I'm partial to Tanya, but <laughs> Tanya wins this fight. And I have no doubt in my mind. But Tanya wins this fight. What do you look at here? Do you go to Shannon Knapp and do you speak to Shannon about your future and Invicta? Do you sit back and wait? And the reason I ask this, Tanya, is because I'm a fan of the sport. And I'm a fan of a lot of these, these women fighters that aren't able to get enough fights to really do anything. And I know you've been in the same boat. I mean, you've struggled to get enough fights to, to you know, survive and do what you do. So what is it for you? You know what? I, I definitely don't get no special treatment. Um, I think I'm just there with the rest of the girls, and we all just sit there and wait. We wait our turn. And, you know, it's crazy. I look in Angela Hill. How many times she fought this year? Four times or something? Like, that's nuts. She almost fought on every single card. Jasmine like, Duke? Crazy. And what a, Miss Duke? I mean, awesome. That's awesome for her. You know, it, I, I would never, like, hate on anything like that because – you know, I think the opportunities only present themselves for so long. So you got to take what you're yeah. given. But listen, but when they're coming know. from the UFC, Tanya, and they go back to Invicta, they get a lot. We got, you know, Miss Duke. She's gotten yeah. a couple of fights. Um, yeah, but you're, you're talking about like, I, I say this like in the most respectful way, but I think yeah. if you're like a middle level fighter, you're going to get more fights than anybody. Obviously, I think you have there's there's certain reasons I don't fight every girl on the roster. You know, their record ain't good enough. Yeah. Um, they, Nobody's gonna buy it. Billion, Who's there's coming a million to watch? reasons, and it ain't me saying I don't want to fight them because I say I'll fight everybody. Like, but Tanya, if wants to fight me, all due respect, like come fight me. It's a fan. Dude, I, I'll fight them. Stand in line, man. I'll fight them all. It I want to see Tanya in. fight I the best. I want to I want to see Tanya fight the best. That's I'm a fan. That's what I yeah. pay for when I come to the fights. So you're yeah. right. That is exactly why. And that's why, in my mind, and I'm going to say this every single show until I get a response or until this happens, which is, Miss Avenger, and I know you want to hit 125, and I love it. That's a legacy thing that's out of my control. I want to see you fight Cyborg at 140. I think that you are the kryptonite to Chris Cyborg. I really do. And I don't want to... Look past yeah, that's, that's, like, that's like saying the same thing everybody else saying. If you want to go to the UFC, just go fight the UFC. Like, that ain't, like, I can't, hey. I don't I'm care where you UFC. fight Cyborg. It doesn't me matter to me. Card. That ain't how that stuff works. Yeah, but so listen, I've, Cyborg, I've obviously... she's ahead. a 140 pound champ in Invicta, or 145 in Invicta. Yeah. So it's not like you couldn't fight her in Invicta, too. I really could, I don't care where you fight her. I don't think, I don't see her coming back and fighting for Invicta. I nope. just don't. 
Nope. I think that she should give that belt up. I don't think it's right to hold the belt and be fighting in the Invicta belt and be fighting in the UFC. I just don't think that's right. But, you know, I'm, it's not my promotion. Well, and, you know, it's it's not my position to say. But, well, you know, that's my personal opinion. But I think it takes a lot from the promotion and it takes a lot from the girls that are, are actively fighting in Invicta and they're here to compete. And then you got untouchable champion over in the UFC. I mean, what do you do? Yeah. Yeah. I just don't see her coming back and fighting for Invicta. I think that UFC is going to open up the weight class or it's going to happen, and she's going to stay over there, you know? Well, but Let me ask we'll you see. this. So let's say that Cyborg does not come back and fight 145 as a champ. Is Tanya Avenger able and willing and wanting to be the 135, the 125 and God forbid the 145 and the 155, dang it. The girls are lucky I can't make 115. <laughs> hey, I, I, you know what? I know that. I know you would, oh my God. Yeah, I, I couldn't even go there. That's a mental vision of those poor girls. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. <laughs> but, um, you know, I mean, listen, it's so wide open. I mean, right now, women's MMA has come a long way, but it's just started. And, and people need to understand. Who has made this possible? Who are the women that have sacrificed it? All the girls have. There's no doubt about it. And everyone gives Rousey the credit because she was able to get Dana White's attention and bring it to the UFC. But I've got to say, Tanya Avenger has done more for women's MMA, as I research my friend more and more, um, than... Pretty much anyone, uh, most anyone that I can find. I mean, you know, this is a passion for you. When you get out of this sport, when you're no longer fighting, you will be involved with this sport. Am I right? Oh, yeah, I want to. I want to. I would love to work for Invicta when I'm done, but yeah. um, I don't I don't know how much uh, I can act up. And she'll still like be like, nah, I don't think you can work for us. <laughs> Tanya. Who knows? But you know what? Either way, I, I definitely would like to, to stay in the sport. I think it's an amazing sport. I love it. I love the competition. I love the. I love. Are you there? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, your screen's black. That's all right. Oh, okay. Sorry. Anyway, I love the sport. I love the competition of it. I love the, the fighters. I love the how much it's grown. So, yeah, I definitely want to stay yeah. forever. Hey. And you know what, honestly, Tanya, position. yeah, and you have, this is the funny thing, though, because you're like a politically correct fighter that's so loyal to the organization and the people that have been there for her, um, and your reputation is a little different than that. But that's why earlier I stated you're not civil, but you do have a couple different personalities. That's what scares these girls, because, listen, there's no doubt about it. When they go in there to fight Tanya Avenger, they're coming at you with their best. They're in shape. They have trained. They have watched footage. They're coming in there to beat your ass. And you, on the other hand, you might not even know. You can't pronounce her name, but you know she is a professional. You know she's in there to hurt you. You take her serious like anyone else. Well, and, I give her all the respect to get in there and fight me. And, you damn know, right. Yep. Just like I do everybody that fights That's me. That's right. Obviously, I need to have that edge, and I need to have that mental mental game, mental preparation for the fight like everybody else, man. We're yep. all out there. We're all nervous. We're all scared. Yep. And it's, it's, and it's just a game of, listen, game of that, will, I guess. Hard. Now, I, I want to tell you something. In music, because I'm a musician, and when you're playing music and, let's say, uh, the vocal goes out, right? You can't hear any vocal. You always keep playing. And I know we're having a little tech issues, so we're going to keep going because it's all good. So I want to say to you this. I think with this fight that's coming up, you have the ability, as as your your reputation and your popularity is growing and growing. And uh, on Twitter, i got to say thanks to Kate, Team Tweeters, all those guys. They're dedicated to pushing Tanya out there. She deserves it. But you're going to prove it stand-up. I want to see 
I want to see Tanya go to the very peak of what you can do. I want to see you challenged as hard as, as far as you can go. And in my mind, the only person I see that can give you that challenge is that 140 with Cyborg. And that's not to say these other girls don't have the ability. They do. They're tough as hell. Extreme. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Listen, I, it's not that I have an offer. It's the offer's been on the table, but I'm not going to go fight her for a couple thousand dollars. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. She signed with USC. If they want to pay, I'll fight her. I'll yeah. fight anybody they put in front of me. When Shannon calls me to tell me to fight, this is how every fighter should be. If you're fighting for a top-level promotion, UFC or Invicta or something like that, welcome to the big leagues, ladies. Like, step up and freaking fight. Don't yeah. make me choose your opponents. That's not how you get to the top. I realize there's a strategy and you don't want to go and jump ahead. But sometimes opportunity comes knocking, and that's the opportunity you better take. Like, I've lost fights, and I saw the opportunity in it, and, and look where I am now. Like, obviously, right. I learned something from them fights, and, you know, I still get shit about people that I lost to. And, you know, that's a long time ago, and I'm a completely different fighter. I'm a completely different head case. So, that's you it. know, say what you, say what you want, but I am where I wanted to be, and I took chances, and I'm here to fight. I'm not here to talk about it. I'm here to freaking fight. So that's right. That's what these ladies should be doing. You don't get an Invicta and then say, oh, I don't want to fight that girl. I don't want to fight that girl. Man, you are in the ocean. Like you ain't yeah. in the little pond anymore. You're in the ocean where the sharks are at, where everybody wants to be on top. So how bad do you want to be on top? Yep. And that's it. And that's it. And that separates everyone. And that's, listen, Tanya, I, I mean, this fight that's coming up, every I've got people saying, "Oh, it's a great card. Oh, it's not such a good card. Oh, it's this, it's that." Listen, people hate it when they don't know when they don't know the fighters or not their favorite fighters. They hate it. But these are the girls that are going to replace me. These are the girls that are going to replace the girls that are the champions now. These are the girls that you're going to be cheering yep. for. The only girls you're going to be cheering for when all yep. of us leave. Yep. So, the elite, the elite girls, and that's a thing. Yeah, it's the they're next. Afraid, yep. They're afraid of the unknown, man. That's what it is. Yep. Well, hey, listen, when you're fighting, you know, all you got is everything to lose. You know, they, they have no reputation. They have nobody knows who they are. You lose to them. Well, you shouldn't have lost. Then, I listen. Even watch that girl turn around and be the champion. Yes, um, ma'am. It's amazing. And listen, it's, it's amazing. a fight game. Any given day, anything can happen. <laughs> one shot, one punch, a bad mistake. It can cost you. And that's it. And, and you know, listen, that's why we love this sport. Um, and that's why we're here. Christ, this is the best thing in the world for me, which is MMA, women's MMA, combat, extreme athletes that are dedicated to the sport, dedicated to the fans. And here we are. We're talking about it. I can't wait for, for the fight. I can't wait for the card. And um, Tanya, give me a little bit of pump, a little promo about the next card for Invicta and, and what we can look forward to. You know what I think that I think that I've been in that spot too where I'm like, oh, this card is not so good because I didn't know the girls. And then I end up watching the card and it's one of the best cards. It's one of the bloodiest cards. It's like fighters that you never even knew were out there. So, you know, I think that I think that they're doing a great thing by trying to settle down in Kansas City a little bit and, and throw some more shows there. Obviously the promotion is a Kansas based promotion. Yep. Um I'd like to see the fans out there, man. I, I don't care if you're a fan or you're a certain fighter or you're a fighter yourself, if you guys aren't watching Invicta, like we're not going to make it. And everybody's career, all these girls that fight for Invicta, our careers are based off of you guys watching. So, yeah. you know, obviously everybody out there, you guys need to watch, man. Everybody yeah. needs to tune in. It's $10. Man, and just make it work. Make it work. Watch the show. Of- it's not very long. It's eight fights. Go to the event. It's in yes. Kansas City. Man, and that's why I have say an event like that, an all-female promotion with and, that level of fighters, fighters from all over the world, and no, you this, get to go watch it. This Kansas is the City. UFC for WMMA. I mean, make no mistake about it. And if you don't support the sport, there is no sport. So to me, it's crazy. Now, I would love, and Shannon, I'm talking to you, Miss Knapp. I respect, <laughs> love you. Please give me the opportunity to help you with this. I will pump this organization. Invicta needs it. It's you have the most elite fighters, the champ, Tanya Avenger, who I believe could easily be the champ in uh, the UFC or any other organization. And um, 
I want to support. I want to help. I want to be there to make this accessible to the fans like myself. And you know what, Tanya? That's something we really need to work on is spreading the word and getting people to understand that these fights are right in your backyard. They're right here. And, and it's not yeah. expensive. It's not going to Vegas and spending $500 for a nosebleed. Yeah, man. This is just like a UFC event. I mean, the promotion is amazing. Their their production is amazing. Their shows are amazing. Yeah. Like, and the what girls are the best outfits. <laughs> it's UFC Fight Pass, but it's UFC. So the promotion, everything is the same uh, as far as the quality. And you're right. It is. I mean, once you go and you see the quality of fights, it's uh, you you realize, wow, I, I've been missing out. I mean, if you're a fan of fights, you know, you, you are you are definitely missing out if you're not watching Invicta. And uh, if you're not watching the girls, but seeing where their careers are going and then looking at the UFC and see how these girls get here and they get there, why they don't get there. To me, it's fun. It's like a soap opera, right? It's Days of Our Lives, but MMA or WMMA. And um, I'm addicted. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad. So, Tanya... That's amazing. Let me, let you me, should be addicted. I'm addicted, and I fight for them. You do. <laughs> you fight like a bitch out there. You kill people. You, you, you. I go you're... to most of the events. Well, I try to go to most of the events, even when I'm not fighting, and, yeah. and I love it every time. Well, listen, you know how many fans you make happy? How many people I've spoke to that get to meet you, and they're like, oh, I met Tanya. You know, I met Tanya. And they, I know that got to feel weird for you, right? But, I mean, listen. People respect you. They look up to you. You are a star. You are the champ. You have put the time in. You deserve the respect. And that's the one thing that I really want to get out there for me that's important, is that people understand the sacrifice. You weren't getting paid money when you were fighting eight years ago and 10 years ago. I mean, come on. You have stayed with this. You have helped build a promotion that is the female UFC. That's in my mind. That's what it is. We have the best women. You know what? Is, you know what's really ironic about that? They're based out of Kansas City, and and I wasn't even on their show until their eighth show, and it was so crazy because I lived in St. Louis. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell is this promotion putting me on the card? Not only am I from <laughs> Kansas City, but I'm considerably a top female fighter, unsigned, and it yeah. took eight shows for them to get me on. And it's when Shannon took over when when everything kind of changed yep. for me and and I was given that opportunity and I came over and uh, she said I'm gonna give you a run at this like you're gonna I want you really to fight I'm gonna give you another run at this so so come in and fight and put on some shows and I think you could beat a lot of girls and I did that and and uh, you know what it it just took like somebody giving me that opportunity somebody believing in me so you know I think that. For any of these girls, man, this is this is huge. It's huge. Yep, and I, I think the moral for me, life changing for sure. Well, the moral to that is when you do get the opportunity, take, take it. it, take it, take it. Mm -hmm. Say hi to somebody, Tanya. <laughs> uh, hi, mom. Hi, That's mom. the best you could have done, Miss Evanger. How are you doing? I love your daughter. Um, <laughs> hey, listen, Tanya, I will speak to you next week. Well, actually, I'll speak to you a lot before that, but the show's next week. We've got a lot of people that are really interested because we're just talking straight and having fun, and it's exciting because as a fan, this is a show I would want to watch every single week, and uh, and I'm excited. I'm honored uh, to be able to do a show with you, Tanya. You are uh, not only an elite fighter, but you are – a very special human being and you have nothing but my respect and um hey for fight tv for modern business entertainment for tanya amager i'm dan cox she's the champ we will see you next time mm -hmm.